Hypothesis testing is obviously of major importance in any kind of research, also in finance and economic research, right? So some of you have participated in the course Research in Financial Markets and one of the uh, tests that we have encountered is the so-called uh, test for nested models uh, in the Pharma and French paper from 2018 entitled Choosing Factors. Um, this test is actually nothing else but a, a chi-square test if you want or a walled test or you can implement it as well as an LM test. LM test is the abbreviation for Legrand Multiplier test. So before we move to the LM test, we will briefly uh, discuss the wall test. Now, we have already uh, talked about the wall test when we have been talking about seemingly, unregression, seemingly unrelated regressions, yeah? where we had this multiple equation model and we had this very long formula. We will encounter now the formula one more time. Yeah? And, I, and I told you already at, at this point in time when we were talking about multiple equation models that the uh, test statistic looks pretty much the same when you have a single equation model. Okay? So the topic for now is the the wall test, which is a chi-square test, basically. So let's again, we operate with our, with our linear regression model as usual. Let's denote our yt as our dependent variable. And this is a portfolio, yeah? a portfolio of, of, of stocks, an equity portfolio in excess returns. So let's denote yt as the excess return of a portfolio at time t. We have as a, on the right hand side uh, a vector of bonds captured by the, by the alpha. We have uh, beta 1 times x1 t and our x1 t and this framework is now denotes now the uh, excess returns of the market factor uh, which is our first regressor at time t and beta 1 captures the exposure of our portfolio against the market factor. Yeah? So again, then we have uh, beta 2 times x 2t and let's say in this framework uh, our x 2t is the size factor, yeah? the, the uh, portfolio um, that is a portfolio that is long on short stocks and short on big stocks. Yeah? The Pharma and French risk factor, the size factor. And obviously the any zero cost strategy is obviously always in excess form yeah, because the uh, risk free rate uh, cancels out on the long and short leg. Okay? So then we have also the value factor as an additional regressor and that's then our uh, beta 3 times x 3t and because we have a regression we also add an error term uh, denoted as ut. Uh, and again, x3t is our value factor, uh, which is a portfolio that is long on value stocks and short on growth stocks. So basically what we are interested in, we are, uh, first of all, we are, de we are describing the evolution of our portfolio by the Pharma and Brand 3 factor model in this case. Yeah? That's what the model is basically uh, about. And as usual, we assume that our UT yeah. our ut is distributed as normal with expectation zero and variance of sigma square u. Okay, that's a standard assumption for the uh, linear regression model. And let's say we are interested in testing yeah, the, the uh, cap n against the Pharma n3 uh, Pharma and French three-factor model. So the regressors that are um, a part of the Pharma and French three-factor model but that are not a part of the cap M is obviously the, the, the size factor and the value factor. So if we test the cap M against the Pharma and French three-factor model, so we can say that the 
uh, cat m is nested in the Thalman and French three factor model. Yeah? So the additional regressors are x2t and x3t, the, ve the uh, value factor and the size factor, and we are interested in these parameters uh, beta2 and beta3, obviously. So if the cap m holds, if the cap m is the correct model, then obviously we would expect that these parameters here are uh, not different from zero simultaneously or jointly. Yeah, so the hypothesis that we are testing or that we are interested in, yeah, if we, uh, we, are, we are interested in investigating if the point estimates beta 2 and beta 3 are equal to zero, so under the null hypothesis, under the null hypothesis H zero, yeah, we have beta 2 is equal to zero and beta 3 equal to zero yeah? and under the null hypothesis yeah? so the alternative hypothesis H1 is then at least one beta i is unequal to zero and i is either two or three. Okay? So we reject the null hypothesis if one of these guys is significant different from zero or two or both parameters are significantly different from zero. So the test statistic now, yeah, as we discussed already earlier, when we discussed multiple equation models, is obviously then given by lambda is equal with a matrix R, which is basically a selection matrix times beta hat minus R transposed times parenthesis open r times the variance of our parameter vector beta hat uh, and our beta hat is obviously a four by one vector yeah in this case yeah beta hat is a four by one vector which has the the estimated alpha is first element, the second element is the estimated beta 1, the exposure against the market factor, the beta hat 2 is the exposure against the size factor, and the beta 3, the estimated beta 3, is the exposure against the value factor. So our beta is in our case a 4 by 1 parameter vector. Yeah? And the variance covariance matrix or the covariance matrix of our beta, uh, beta hat is obviously then a 4 by 4 matrix. So times R transposed, parenthesis closes, inverted, times R times beta hat minus R. Yeah? So once again, R, our indi indicating or indicator matrix times our parameter vector minus R, small r, yeah, transposed. So what is here is obviously if we have these two, we have two uh, conditions. So obviously what we have here, but we will show it uh, soon. This is a two by one vector transposed. So what is here is a one by two vector. What is here is obviously a two by two matrix. Yeah? We will also see it very soon why this is so. And what is here is a two by one vector. So basically the whole expression here is obviously a scalar. Yeah? It's a one by one, yeah? it's, 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 a, it's, it's a number. And this number, this random variable is under the null hypothesis distributed as chi square distribution with two degrees of freedom. Two degrees of freedom because we test two parameters. So obviously the degrees of freedom are depending on how many um, conditions we have here yeah? or how, how, how our pair of hypotheses looks like, how many parameters 
we are testing here. So as I already told, told you, the, uh, our estimated beta hat vector is a 4 by 1 vector that stacks the estimated parameters of this regression equation in a parameter vector. So what is R? Yeah, we, we talked already earlier about this. So R basically depicts the corresponding uh, parameters yeah, out of our parameter vector. So in our case, so which, which uh, uh, if we plot here, here's our alpha alpha, here's our beta 1, here's our beta 2, here's our beta 4. So now we just have to basically read it. So what is the binary vector that, pick, that, that gives us the uh, beta 2? It's obviously a 0, 0, 1, 0 vector. So this basically is our first condition, yeah? beta 2 equal to 0. So the second, because we have two conditions, we need to have two, uh, two rows here. So we have two row vectors. So the second one, what gives us the the beta 3, it's obviously 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's a 2 by 4 matrix, yeah? because we have two restrictions. Yeah? And, and our parameter vector has the uh, dimension 4 by 1. If you have two restrictions and our parameter vector is of dimension 4 by 1, our R has the dimension 2 by 4, yeah? by definition. What's our R? So our R is obviously 0 and 0. This is, the, this is basically our restriction. So R is equal to 0 and 0. Yeah? If our hypothesis would be that this parameter is 1 and this is uh, 0 0.5, then we would have here a 1 and here a 0 0.5, yeah? obviously. So this is basically uh, the, re the restriction that we test. So that's a 2 by 1 vector obviously. And our variance, this guy here, we know already how it is defined. So this guy here, our, the variance of our parameter vector is defined as sigma square times x transposed x inverted. Yeah? So and this guy here is obviously a 4 by 4 matrix. Yeah, four by four matrix. Our X matrix, we know already, so we need our X matrix obviously here as, as, as input matrix for compounding our, uh, the, the, the covariance matrix of our parameter estimates yeah, how, our, how, looks our, how does our X matrix look like in our case. So obviously we have the vector of ones yeah, that corresponds to the alpha here. We have a vector of excess returns, market excess returns, yeah, starts with observation uh, one at time uh, x11, which is the first observation of our market vector in excess form. Then we have our x12, which is the second observation of the, of the market vector in excess form at time two, until x1t, yeah, which is the last observation in our sample uh, of the market factor in excess form. Yeah? Then we have the next regressor, which is uh, the size factor uh, x21, which is the first observation of the size factor at, uh, in our sample. Then the next one is x22, which is the second observation of the size factor at time uh, corresponding to time uh, equal to 2. And finally, we have x2 capital T. Yeah, and the same, of course, for the, for the value factor, uh, x31 is the first observation, x32, and so on, until x3t. Yeah? So obviously, our x matrix is a t by 4 matrix. Yeah? And this is, it is transposed and multiplied with itself in this formula here, and then inverted. Yeah? And this is something what our matrix program, in our case MATLAB, will, will do for us. Yeah? And we know also this sigma square, we can estimate it easily. Yeah? Sigma square hat is then simply given by the regression residuals u hat transposed u hat 
div divided by capital T minus 5, right? Because we have obviously here, no, 4 minus 4, because we have 4 parameters. So, so now we have defined everything. And now we can also discuss the, uh, our test statistic a, a bit more in detail. So obviously our R has the dimension 2 by 4. Yeah? 2 by 4 times something that is 4 by 1 is 2 by 1. Our vector R is 2 by 1. So something that is 2 by 1 minus 2 by 1 is 2 by 1. What is here has the dimension 2 by 1 and here it's transposed in the beginning so this guy here is 1 by 2 yeah and what is here that's 2 by 4 times 4 by 4 times 2 by 4 transposes 4 by 2 times uh, uh, four, two, uh, two by uh, 4 by 2, so what is here in brackets has the dimension 2 by 2. Yeah? So 2 by 4 times 4 by 4 times 4 by 2 is, it has the dimension 2 by 2. So, and if you multiply this out, so this whole expression here, 1 by 2 times 2 by 2 times 2 by 1 is 1 by 1. Yeah? So what is here, what comes out, if you multiply out this equation, is it's basically a, a scalar, it's just a number, a random number, yeah? and this random number is under the null hypothesis, if our null hypothesis is true, this guy here is distributed as chi square with two degrees of freedom. 